Hey everyone, this is Tio. Today I have a drawing tutorial for you. I'm going to teach you how to draw this boat with pen, ink, and watercolor. You can download the reference photo in the video description if you want to follow along. This is one of many reference photos that I have taken. If you want to practice on your own, you can download the additional photos and practice on your own after the tutorial. Today we'll focus on this. The first thing before drawing is I want to take some proportions. So the largest shape is actually this black area here. And you see these uh, wheels here at the back. They take up about one third of this um, black area. Or is it more than one third? Maybe it's about half or slightly less than half. So this is one unit, one unit, and this is like a very small unit. So after I have uh, taken this proportion, I should be able to fit everything onto the pitch. Now this photo may be a bit um, confusing because there is actually another boat or sh yeah, there's another boat behind here. So you have to be careful to spot, to observe carefully which are the parts that belong to this boat and which are the parts that belong to this right in the background. For this tutorial, you just need a pen, any pen will do. So this is one third, this is one third, and this is the small part right in front of the boat. There are seven wheels there, so I'm going to draw seven wheels and try to fit them into this um, area here. Try to draw them um, in one action, like if you want to draw a circle, draw the circle in one action. Straight away, I have made some sort of mistake because this wheel here, it's supposed to be right up here, but I drew it um, further down here. But it doesn't matter because it doesn't really affect the sketch at all. So we have one, two, three, four, there are seven. And this is a large one. So the more attention you pay to your subject, give to your subject, the more accurate it's going to be. Okay, so we have one third of the boat's body right here. So that was pretty quick. And now let's draw this uh, line here that goes across. So it's like this. It tilts up slightly. So this is one third, this is one third. And you can draw the wheels here as well. And let me draw the front here, the angle. It's about 45 degrees. Comes down like this. And this line, this is much steeper, comes down like this. And I think the line here it tilts slightly like this. Hands about here and then it goes like this. Let's draw the back of the boat. There's this part here that stops here. So now I'm drawing the side of the boat. There's this part here, this black part here that comes up here, goes to the left. And this part comes up, comes down like this. So pay attention to what you are looking at. I think it looks something like this. So now I'm going to draw the white portion of the boat. I'm going to draw this um, part here first. I'm not sure what this part is called. So it goes all the way up here, comes down like this. There are five windows. So there's one, two, three. This one is a small one, four, five. And this line here, it curves up slightly. And then this thing comes up like this. So the height of this, it's about, it's slightly shorter than this. So let me just draw it here. Basically just build parts of the boat uh, by part by part. So you can see sometimes I draw here, sometimes I draw here. I don't really have a specific sequence, 
but in general I try to draw the largest elements first so in this case I started by drawing the bottom of the boat first so this is the window and this part here goes up and then it curves slightly like this and this is the roof comes down like this there's a life boy here and then one here as well see my proportion is a bit off so there is supposed to be a bit more horizontal uh, space here so once you lose concentration sometimes you can make mistakes in one of the comments, uh, someone said that there is no mistakes in um, sketching. Well, that's sort of true. If you're sketching for fun, yeah, I don't think there's any uh, mistakes. I would say a mistake is um, something that you want to draw, but you uh, drew it wrongly because of your lack of attention. So this is the front part, and there are a lot of uh, vertical um, I think antennas right up there so let me just draw some of them it's actually very difficult to see uh, so see how they look like because I was uh, I, this photo was taken quite far away and many of these are structures they overlap onto each other so very difficult to see what's actually going on Okay, I think this uh, looks about there. Anyway, if it's not accurate, it doesn't really matter because if you're drawing this from real life, you definitely will not be able to see all the details here. And I'm able to draw this only because I zoom in with the camera and I was able to take a rather high resolution shot. But if you're drawing from real life, I don't think um, you can see all these details let's draw the goods on the back they are carrying some cargo so this is the side of the cargo this is the front that is facing the light there's another cargo here this is also the side of the cargo this is the side this is the front this is the side I'm mentioning the side and the front because later on when we use watercolor to paint over the side will be in shadow whereas the front it will be lighted up I also want to draw some of those um, netting that is holding the cargo together Okay, um, I think someone, someone's hanging their clothes here on this railing. Okay, so I think this is pretty much, pretty much done. I just want to add in some uh, little details here and there. And I can see some, um, some tires here again but only because I'm using this reference photograph and there seems to be an edge here and this edge is the lighted part of the edge like the part of the boat so later on when I paint this this needs to be uh, lighter compared to this body which is going to be black okay um, there's uh, there's some railings here so let's draw those railings railing here for lines that do not contribute to the structure you can um, use a thinner line if you are using a fountain pen you can turn over and use a thinner line I think that's about it and I want to draw the horizon 
the horizon is here if you take a look at the photo there is this uh, container cylindrical container here but I'm not sure if it's if it actually belongs to this particular boat I cannot tell so I'm not going to draw that in anyway the horizon is here this is the horizon line so this is the horizon line this is a vertical line it goes across and this horizontal line will cut across everything and comes out here and it goes across like that now if you want to draw uh, some stuff in the background you can do so mm, I mean now I'm going to just use my artistic impression and draw some uh, foliage this is near a harbor so I want to draw some um, railing and some trees there's a building here I just want to draw that building in I don't I'm not going to draw a lot of details because um, all these are in the background so you can see that I'm just doing a very quick rough sketch here and sometimes when you are just um, drawing for fun um, I mean just have fun don't stress out. don't be too stressed out in this case um, when you're drawing the background also pay attention to the proportion pay attention to where the subjects are try to get the proportion right there is another tall building in the background and I think some of the windows are here but most of these are just um, trees because there are a lot of lines here I'm not going to draw the trees behind I want to um, keep this place keep this area simple you see these are very stylized very stylized palm trees okay this is done let's uh, color this and now I'm going to use some cerulean blue to paint the water and I'm going to mix it with ultramarine to give it some variation I'm not going to use a lot of paint because the water the value of the water it's not um, it's not it's actually quite light so this is ultramarine I can cover the boat because later on I will paint this part black so you don't have to paint like close to the line you can overlap it okay this part here will be a bit darker but maybe I will paint it a bit darker right now just using some ultramarine and burnt sienna okay now for this part here for this area here um, I'm going to paint with sap green this is my go-to color when it comes to painting foliage be very careful for, about the shape so see this building here make sure the lines they are straight and make sure the colors the paint they only go to places where you want them to go to and don't paint over areas that you're not supposed to paint so just be a bit more careful here I'm going to add some ultramarine to get some variation so this whole part is just going to be set green and occasionally I will just add in some ultramarine to get that variation You can see some colors leaking into the water it's okay because the water is going to get some reflection from the 
foliage that is above. Now this part here, it's a bit tricky because you know what, I'm just going to paint over this whole thing here. If you take a look at the reference photo, some of those are vertical structures, they are white. So later on, I'm just, I'm just going to use the white gel pen to draw the white lines back. So the white gel pen is sort of like the cheating move. If you are just using watercolor, you can use masking fluid, but masking fluid, I mean, white gel pen is just more convenient. Okay, so um, this part here, I'm going to wait for it to dry and I'm going to wait for everything to dry before I paint it in the next layer. Sorry I have to jump to this stage because I accidentally forgotten to record the part where I painted in the shadows for the boat. Anyway, for the shadows of the boat, I painted using a mix of French ultramarine and burnt sienna. It's a light mixture, not anything too dark, just to paint on the shadow side of this boat. I also painted the buildings in the background as well as the concrete beside the foliage. So right now I'm actually drying this sketch using a hair dryer just to speed things up a bit. Bit. The sketch is now dry. I'm going to mix more ultramarine and burnt sienna to paint the shadow areas and the areas that are close to black. So I'm going to start here first, the trees here, just to give it a bit more contrast. And this part here, which is under the roof, it's very dark close to black so let me just paint like this you see this is close to black some of the trees here are black as well now watercolor it's a medium that is best used if you uh, paint in like one uh, single movement don't paint it like this like oil painting it's going to look very patchy Try to keep your shapes uh, neat as if they are painted in one single stroke. Sometimes the paper can make your paint look patchy. That's because the quality of the paper is not good enough, the sizing is not correct, or well, the paper is just not that good. So when you're painting, the paint doesn't move that much, the water doesn't move, and they don't diffuse gently to other areas. That can make the paint look patchy as well. This part here, okay. Now this part here, I'm going to paint with concentrated ultramarine and burnt sienna. I'm going to mix a lot of paint because there is a large area for me to cover. So I'm going to paint um, like this. There are some highlights on the tires, but um, doesn't matter. I'm just going to cover that right now, cover them right now. Later on, I'll just paint, I'll just draw those highlights in with the white gel pen. So if you need the color to be very dark, you just need to use more pigment. This darker wash that you are looking at right now, this is actually mixed with phthalo blue and a warm red, so it's darker than usual darker than the ultramarine and burnt sienna mix. The inside of the boat here in this room, it's black. It's going to be darker as well, darker. I almost cannot see the tires here anymore, which is actually what the reference photo is showing because I really cannot see the tires. This paper is not that good. This is the Hanamule watercolor paper. So it's not that good when you when it comes to glazing over and over again. There is a limit to how much 
layers are you can glaze over for the water here i'm going to use some ultramarine and add a little bit of sap green this is almost dry so now it's time to add in some of the highlights that i accidentally painted over there are some highlights for the tires depending on how the sun is hitting the tires those are highlights they will appear on um, certain areas the name of this boat is C Casprell anyway it's too um, the space here is not enough for me to write the actual letters so I'm just going to do some impression of the letters there's this horizontal line that goes across so I'm going to draw that part here there's this um, white thing here and if you take a look at the side here some of the water is coming out from the side of the boat so I want to draw that as well this part here is highlight this is a highlight wheels here they have highlights and this part of the boat it's actually a bit uh, lighter maybe I shall just uh, put some white dots here if you look closely at the reference photo this whole shape here it's not I mean this part here is black but here it has that uh, gradation going on which I did not um, notice earlier and now I can use this white gel pen to draw in some uh, strokes on the water some highlights on the water I'm not going to draw it too close to the boat the highlights appear further away from the boat and some of these highlights they are actually um, the reflection of the white part of the boat the name of the boat is written here as well I'm going to use the back side of my fountain pen to scribble some uh, letters and here as well and here now these um, two floats they are orange in color I'm going to color them later on now, this part um, here that I mentioned earlier they are supposed to be white now this white gel pen this is the Sakura, Sakura jelly roll which is sometimes the tip it would get blocked off so you have to make sure that the paint is dry before you draw with it and this is I mean 08 it's still a bit too thin Yesterday I went to buy another white gel pen. This is the Uniball Signal Broad. So this is supposed to be easier to draw with. And indeed it is much easier to draw with because the lines they are thicker. You can lay down more ink. I have to draw a bit slower. Some of these are things they are actually just black stuff so for the things that are black maybe I'll just use the black fountain pen to add in some details and lastly for the floats here I need to paint very carefully this is just new gumbosh mixed with a red there is some red here as well let me add in some more details here this black line here is supposed to go behind this float let me use a thicker line okay I think it looks it looks all right and I'm going to use the white gel pen again this time on the float So there are these are ropes that go across 
I mean go on the floats just on some little details some little details here as well so this is the completed sketch drawn in 45 minutes this place is Sentosa today's date is 31st October 2018 I'm going to hide my signature here sometimes I like to hide my signature somewhere in the sketch so that if people were to copy my art I can tell them that this is my art because my signature is somewhere in the sketch but you don't know where it is let's take a closer look at the area here so these are the antenna lines actually you do not need to draw those lines with black ink earlier if you plan in advance if you know that you're going to draw them eventually with the white gel pen you don't need to draw them with the ink lines but sometimes um, I forget I don't do a lot of planning so I drew them with the black lines but sometimes if you plan in advance it will make uh, some parts of your sketch look better the floats I love the floats I like the white gel pen on the orange floats so this part here um, all the sides of this boat they are in shade and this part here is supposed to be in shade as well this this is the door there I've got to color it so let me just paint one very pale uh, shade there so this is supposed to be in shade as well so all these uh, parts that are not facing the sun they are in shade and the shadow is not very strong because there is a lot of reflected light from the from the water see the tires this is not I mean this specific area here this is not black you can see this part is black but this is not black if I use a lot of pigment then it's going to use like it's going to look like this but sometimes sometimes it's very difficult to mix this sort of concentration unless you really use a lot of pigment that's going to make you use up your paint very fast so I think uh, this sort of value I think this is good enough for me I like the details here the letters and the little highlights here little details on the water you can see some uh, highlights in the water as well so this part is the part where the water is coming out from the side of the, side of the boat so when you have um, this sort of texture this is from ultramarine it's very nice I like the texture backgrounds are important as well and you should paint them carefully so that they are not distracting my background is a bit distracting because some of the shapes they are a bit weird like this area here this is like a oval shape this should be a straight edge uh, shape here and some of the trees I think the trees are all right just that some of the brush strokes like this with the ends that are circular they look a bit distracting like for example if you are painting windows you know they are supposed to be rectangular but somehow the shapes the rectangle is all rounded off it's going to look a bit weird it's going to attract unwanted attention I will scan this and put the link to the scan in the video description below so that you can check out the scan in higher resolution and that's all for my tutorial today I hope this is helpful and informative if you have any questions let me know in the comment section below if you want to check out more tutorials you can check out my youtube playlist or you can support me on my patreon page to access even more tutorials thanks for watching see you guys in the next video bye